Today, I'm going to show you how to build a starter house in Minecraft survival with no planning and very few resources on the fly. Don't you go anywhere. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode from me, Avamance. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make this gorgeous hilltop Minecraft starter base. We're going to make it on the fly. I'll show you how to let the ideas flow as you build so you end up with something that looks amazing without any planning. So let's rewind time and crack on with it, shall we? Now, I'm gonna be making this up as I go along, but these are the kind of resources that I think I'm gonna be using as I'm building it. I'm gonna try and make this as block by block as possible without making the video too long, so you stay and watch all of it. Do you hear that? Watch it till the end. So we're gonna freestyle this just a little bit. One, two, three, leave a gap of three there with two wooden blocks, then come one block backwards and we're gonna build ourselves a little short stairway. This won't be the whole of the stairway. It's just gonna be the start of it so as we can guide our eye as to where it is we're gonna be going. And once I've done that along the side of that, I'm gonna bring another wooden post. One, two, three. And that is gonna be where we finish that for now, I think. Here, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna make that a flower bed and we'll bring those up there like that. I'll leave that that side. And I'm also gonna place these trap doors here. Again, just to help guide my eye a little bit so I know exactly where it is I'm going with those things. And behind here, I'm gonna place three high wooden posts because I think that's probably high enough for me to be able to come here in behind and start to build myself out a little window area. Those blocks don't matter because they're hidden, but then we're gonna variegate and texture that a little bit there like that. I'm gonna bring in a pane of glass directly in there. That then can be cobble. And then up here, we can bring this one higher. And this is gonna be where we have our cross beam like this and also one coming out there and one coming out the front of that as well. I think that works nicely. We'll stick a button on the front of those just to give a little bit of a pinned feel. I think that works quite well. I'm then gonna get the oak trap doors. I'm gonna place oak trap doors either side of that window, I think. And then we're gonna go straight into decorating, which isn't what you'd normally do. But I'm gonna pop in a flower pot there and we'll bang in a cornflower just for a splash of color. That looks brilliant. We'll get our lantern on the underside, that side and that side. And that is a decent start to the front of our house. We're gonna come around the back now and we're gonna square this off by placing ourselves some wood there and there. We're gonna bring these up two more. So they're kind of in level with this over here as well. We can then bring across cross struts to there and get some pop outs, cross struts to there and get some pop outs and cross struts across there with a pop out there and there also. And as with the other pop out, we're just gonna shove some buttons on just to give the pinned effect. Now this underside here, I've got a pop out there, look. Underside here, I think, if we lantern up all of those edges, it's gonna be open. We may even put a little bit of a farm in there, but I'm gonna open it up, I think, by pulling three fence gates like that, but I'm also gonna put fence gates across the top as well. In fact, what I think I might do is I'm gonna bring one, two, three. I'm gonna place that there with another pop out and therefore obviously another button as well. I'm gonna make a two wide area there and then we're gonna bring in a wall. This is gonna be a temporary block right there, I think. We're not all gonna have that as andesite because we need to make a little bit of texture using some different blocks. I'm just gonna build this wall up and I'm gonna put a window in two wide just there and one wide just in there. Now I'll grant you that does look a little bit flat. So what we're gonna do is just gonna pop in a couple of upside down stairs there. I'm gonna put a flower pot there and I'm gonna put a flower pot there again with another cornflower. Let's keep it consistent. And I'm gonna pop a lantern just there. We're gonna put some decoration around it in a minute, but I'm not quite ready for that. But the wall is gonna look okay. I'm then gonna get myself another fence. I'm gonna pop that there like that. A fence, I'm gonna pop that there like that. And I'm gonna get myself a spruce trap door and I'm gonna bring it all the way over the top. And I'm gonna repeat that on this side as well because I think that spruce trap door makes for just a nice little shutter going across the top. It doesn't look nearly as flat as it did anymore. 
we're going to come inside here and in this area under here this is going to become the farm i think so what i'm going to do is i'm going to dig that out from under there make that waterlogged and i'm then going to bring in not too much just a little bit of a farm area it doesn't have to be too big we can creep underneath those stairs as well i'm just going to pop in another thing there and i'm going to make this three wide like that and i'm then going to plant up with just a little bit of seedage so as we can grow ourselves some wheat underneath our base like this it gives us the tiniest little farm but it works quite well inside this section of the house i'm going to place in some wood logs like this to make a bit of a floor we're going to make them face all the same way i wouldn't normally always do that but this time i am I'm going to make them face all the same way and i'm going to grab myself an axe and i'm going to strip those down and that looks like quite a nice internal floor and we can come in and put a little bit of furniture in that very very shortly i'm also gonna trap door this up as well to create a closed effect i'm now coming up the stairs we're going to make one more level and this is the level that we're going to build our floor and again i'm going to come across too wide like that grab my axe and i'm going to strip that floor out like that and then again pull even more along with the same wood to create a floor for the upstairs area like this i'm going to try and get them all again in the same direction if you want to just wobble them around a little bit like this you obviously could just to make it a little bit more patterned i'm going for a little bit regular with this one i think i'm also going to come down onto that trap door there and i'm going to place that oak block there and i'm going to bring this up so as we have a higher area to make our house this is going to come again four high across these six not those two jutting out just these six and what i'm going to do because this is an upper level we don't want it as heavy so we're going to use wood instead of stone on this bottom level to build up our walls and all i'm going to do very simply is build it up using this stripped oak wood i'm going to keep a window that is too wide there i'm also going to keep one wide windows on the other sides like that and this one we're just going to block up entirely on this side we can make ourselves an opening like that and that is where our door is going to go i'm also going to pop these up just one higher because we can then grab some fence posts and build those fences across just to block in this little landing area with the door always come on the inside so as when you're on the outside it looks like it's got a little bit of depth then placing some glass on those window points just to bring the light in. And then we've got to start thinking about the roof. And I think for the roof, we are going super simple. I'm just going to use deep slate brick for the entirety of this roof. We're not going to trim it off with a different block trim. We're just going to go all the way along with our pop outs coming outside of the roof there like that with deep slate bricks in a very regular 12 12 gable which is just this standard triangular gable also going to come underside in it here as well because that means on the underside it looks like it's got a more regular uplift internally as well as externally we will need to pop those ones out because we're going to need to do something on the gable end to make sure that it looks right we're going to finish off this gable with a little overhang of the steps like that face a step outwards like that and then come around sideways and flip the step out here we're going to have some slab just bringing it in twice and that gives a nice edge to the gable moving along there i'm just going to pop that off because that wasn't what it was meant to be we can start a little bit of decoration now now on this front side i'm going to bring in a little bit of a campfire overhang i think that could look quite nice i'm just going to pop those campfires out using my spade with a right click and I'm then going to get my spruce fence and build in the support post because you can't have it just sat there hanging. That wouldn't be right. That would make me feel very sad. But it looks really nice as a bit of an overhang there, definitely. And then what we can do, we can also move this overhang feel to the side as well by shoving another three wide overhang using more campfires on this side. Again, support it with a fence post, whatever you do. Never just leave these things hanging. They look appalling. And then put it out using our shovel we can then put some detail into these windows the same as we did before by using some steps as support and also bringing in our upside down stairs 
just to add a bit of a window box and we can do that on any of the windows we want. I'm going to do it on these two and on the other one I think I'm going to do a slightly different looking window just to change it up a little bit. That works quite nicely. On this one I'm going to pop that there and that there. We're going to bring again similarly that under like that. That works quite nicely and then I'm going to bring the trapdoor across the front as well. Gives a little bit of a different feel and I quite like it. We're then going to underpin these pop outs here with some steps again it just adds a little bit to the depth and the detail and I'm also going to put the buttons in to make it look like it's been nailed together I'm now going to come in and pop that trap door there just to finish that because otherwise look there's a blooming gap as you're looking through that don't work does it I'm also going to bring some width to the house this adds a little bit of extra support to it on top of these logs I'm going to place a couple of trapdoors I think it finishes them off just a little bit more nicely than that open wood and I'm also going to place trapdoors here just to change up the texture I was a little bit uncomfortable with the way that texture was looking on the side of the house and that that continues up that trapdoor feel as we go towards that roof speaking of the roof I'm just going to finish this up by placing a few random solid blocks it gives the roof a little bit more of a bumpy feel making it slightly more rustic looking rather than that regular triangle that still definitely works but I quite like the idea of having these bumps and bruises all over the roof it looks like it's been well worn and weathered much nicer looking and in these gable ends I'm going to use three trap doors like this I just need to pop that out because I didn't and then flap them up again that closes that off gives a consistency with that trap door texture which I really quite like in these old small rustic houses and then we can add a little bit more detail under here as well either by using some upside down stairs like that or perhaps that might work a little bit better with those trap doors as well I might trap door up like that again it gives a continuous feel in this outside area here this looks to me like a working station so let's get ourselves some barrels just kind of flopping around all over the place they've been doing some hard graft here I suspect I also think you could probably pop in a furnace if it's an external working area that works quite nicely I'm also going to path that up to give a bit of differentiation to the rest of that external area too I'm coming inside now we're just going to do something with this area here now you've got a few choices what I'm going to do is make it into another work area so I'm going to place a furnace either side of that window I'm going to place an upside down step there I think as well that will give us an area for him to store things we'll place that smoker there we'll place a blast furnace underneath that window like that and we're going to pop a loom um, we're actually going to undercut that there and put the loom underneath it because that gives us a continuous area I've just messed up that field I'll fix that in a minute I can then also place another couple of barrels under there for some more storage I'm also going to put a light in both corners just so as it is plenty light inside here you don't have to do that but you can we can then come upstairs and just do a little bit of detailing inside here you do not need very much again we're going to put an upside down step on either one of those and I'm actually going to place a lantern on both of those so I think that works really quite well I'm then going to place a bed one side of that we're going to put a row of chests three high there and we're going to place some carpet down inside here because when you get up in the morning you want to be able to put your feet down on something nice and warm I'm then going to place a chain on one in from either side I'm going to pop a lantern in that as well because I think that looks quite decent we can also then grab ourselves our trap doors again and make a shelf along the front there grab some chests pop a chest there double chest single chest at the end a little bit of extra storage didn't hurt anybody I'm also going to swap that out for another furnace just in case he wants to do some early morning smelting we're going to place a lantern on that there and we're going to come down and we're going to see what else we can pop around we're very very nearly towards the end of this build but we've got a couple other things that I think we need to do I'm going to bring in a composter I think what I'll do is I'll put that around at the side here just next to this area so as when he comes out with some of his extra seeds he can compost that up I'll perhaps pop that in there I think that works for me and now we're just down to bushing bushing 
well, bushing you've got to do the way it feels. Just pop bushes down where you think it feels right. Don't overbush whatever you do, because sometimes overbushing can make things look a little bit weird. But right now, I think plenty of bushes on this area here, where this can come down to the outside. We can maybe bring that around there. I'm just gonna carry on put some more bushing around the entire area. So all we need to do is just bring up a little bit of path towards the house, so as there is somewhere to walk. So coming from the bottom of those stairs, we're gonna take out three blocks there. We're gonna come backwards. We're gonna take out those three blocks there as well. We're gonna continue with path coming away from the house like this. Don't path every block, because if you path every block, it just looks just a little bit too coarse. And then we're gonna place some slabs in there, some slabs in there so there's an easy step. Add a little bit more path block and that can be taken away from the house in whatever direction you'd like. Then in amongst these path blocks, pop down some gravel just to give some differentiation to that ground. And if you wanted to, you could also pop in a little bit of podzol. It's quite a sharp color, so you don't have to use a podzol, but I quite like it. It's especially good if you're using this for animal pathing. And then a little bit of coarse dirt, which then won't obviously change into grass when the grass grows around it. There's a nice little path. And then add yourself a bit of fence, just as a guide on either side like that. It's good to use three section fences and then place a torch on either side of those. And then finally, bring in some leaves. You can use both oak and spruce are my favorite to put on the sides of paths, just to grab a little bit more bushing so as people can see exactly where that path is. Just pop them down relatively randomly. Again, don't overbush, but do them in small clumps rather than one giant line because one giant line doesn't really work so much. You can see how we're gonna variegate up again using this spruce leaf rather than just oak. And it just gives a more realistic feel because bushes aren't all one color. And at this point, you might wanna decorate around the outside. It's entirely up to you. I'm just gonna make a little garden. And every little garden has got a pond, or at least every little decent looking wild garden has got a bit of a pond. So I'm gonna make a relatively random shape with my spade here. I think that works quite well. I'm gonna make it two deep in some areas, one deep in others. And I'm gonna line it up with gravel and coarse dirt like this, fairly randomly. So as a, it doesn't look like basically you've just got a load of dirt in the bottom. So I'm just gonna grab this coarse dirt and pop that in the bottom as well. I don't want grass lurking all over it so the coarse dirt will stop that from happening. I'm then gonna fill it up with water and make sure that you've got it in a regular, you can see the way the pattern on that water is there means that that is all water source blocks. You can then continue to take the top layer out. As long as it's not too wide, you will end up with water going all the way across. If you've made your pond too wide, what you might find is that the water doesn't make it right to the middle and you have gotta put like a block in there. But that one's worked absolutely perfectly. I'm then gonna just decorate around the outside using things like bamboo. I'm also gonna use some green glass to pull in some bulrushes. Actually, I might not use bamboo, I might use sugar cane. Let's use sugar cane instead of bamboo. Bamboo might get too tall. So pop a little bit of sugar cane around the outside. Normally to the back, if you've got the front of the house there, you wanna put the sugar cane at the back so you've got plenty of space. I'm just gonna pop a couple of lilacs in there as well. And then you can also, just on the edge of your pond, change up the texture of the edge of the pond using some more coarse dirt and a little bit more gravel just to make it look like you've got a nice edging in there. I'm also going to place in just a few lily pads to give it some texture and I'm going to put some bone meal in the bottom so as it looks like we've got some grass and life. Finally, I'm going to take some green stained glass and on a bit in the very bottom that is not touching, I'm going to place in this green glass. I'm going to make it three high so it pokes nicely out and I'm going to pop in a brown candle on the top. That then makes a really great looking bulrush. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna come along and pop just a little bit of fencing just here, three fence rule with a lantern on top to put some light into the garden. Nothing more than that. I don't want any structures. I don't want swings or anything like that. I'm just gonna place some fencing to put some light in 
and a little bit of structure. Always three fences with the little lamp in the middle like that. Three fences, lamp in the middle. And finally, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop out one little block there, fill it with water, put a trap door over the top, and then I'm gonna grab myself a hoe and I'm just gonna hoe up a few random squares around here that will allow me to grow out some melons and some pumpkins. I think that just adds a really nice little touch of color with the green and the orange of the pumpkin like that and when they grow up they'll look great what you can also then do is again just to edge off around place yourself just one fence to give a little bit of minor structure next to that little garden of melons and pumpkins there that'll look great when that grows and then with any wild garden we've already bone milled around it we need to make sure we've got some bushes in there as well wild gardens have always got bushes you know i love my bushes and you're going to use again spruce and oak leaves just to bring your bushes around in clumps to make it look as attractive as you can without being overbushed. Is there such a thing as overbushing, I ask myself. But, you know, it's really important that you don't make it all leaves and no ground. So let's just change up, put a little bit of spruce in there as well. The house is complete. We have a lovely outside area with a path through a wild garden, a pond and a little melon and pumpkin patch. Right in the middle of that, we have our house standing proud with everything we would need for a Minecraft starter base. It looks great and provides protection and a place to sleep and work while you develop your Minecraft world. I hope you enjoyed watching this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you've got any requests or thoughts, please do leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying them and I will keep on making them. Also, if you're not done already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.